Hello, Mr. Schwanekamp here. Today we are talking about pie charts and dot plots, basically just another way of visualizing data. So these are probably things you've seen before. You've seen a pie chart before. We're not gonna get crazy di different than what you already know. If you're good at this, you'll continue to be good at this. Uh, just a little bit of, of some practice with it. We'll understand what are the benefits of a pie chart versus a dot plot and kind of understand what's going on. So not too bad, not real heavy duty math today, just understanding how to read some graphs. So that's where we're headed. Let's see what we can do. So we pull 150 students and ask them what their favorite type of music. Is. Estimate the percentages of each. Remember, it needs to add up to 100%. So that's the key here. Sometimes you get some funny graphs on the uh, on the internet because people do weird stuff with them, but 100% is what a pi should add up to. All right, just a quick reminder that 360 degrees is in a circle. So if I were to ask you, which percentage does each one look like? Hopefully you would start off with hip hop and R&B. Uh, that is half of this thing. So 50% is going to be that one. Uh, that's 50%. I would say pop looks very similar to a quarter. Um, looks like it is about one fourth of this circle. So that would be 25%. Other and rock, they're not the same. I would say other is bigger than rock. And so I would probably estimate this to be 15% and 10%. Whatever our estimations are there, when I add them all together, it should add up to, add up to 100%. If they wanted you to be more specific, they would give you numbers here. But again, we are just approximating what's happening with that. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. If there were 150 kids pulled, how much would you choose each type? And so this is a fairly easy concept, but basically we are going to use these percentages to figure out the number. Well, if I've got 150, I would take 150 times 0.5, because remember 50%, I would wanna write that as a decimal. You know what half of 150 is, but if you have forgotten, times 0.5, oh yeah, that is 75 people would have chosen hip hop and R&B. If I'm doing pop, we're going to go 75 divided by, I'm sorry, let's, let's do that again. Uh, let's go 150 times 0.25 because we're doing 25%, uh, 37 and a half people. And so if we looked at this graph, it's not going to be 37 and a half. We can't have half a vote unless somebody voted for two, but we're going to stay with that number, at least for this est estimate, because we are estimating the percentages of each. So that probably, if you look at that pop, maybe it's a little bit less than 37 and a half because it's not quite a 90 degree angle. So I can see where you got 37% from that one. Uh, rock, so we're gonna take 150 times 0.1 because that's 10%. Ah, don't hit that weird negative. I get 15 people for rock. And so what's that gonna leave me for my other uh, 0 0.15 times 150? I get 22 and a half. If I were to clean up that half a person, maybe I would say there were 37 pop and 23 other, but that's the right idea, all right? Nothing crazy, we are estimating, 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 estimating. All right, try it again. A teacher asks uh, his class to vote on which, on uh, vote on where they would most like to go on a field trip. All 30 students cast one vote each. So 30 students cast one vote each. Label the pie with percentages, approximately how many students did each of the following. So 43%. So let's look at my numbers, 43, 28, 11, 11, seven. So let's label this thing, 43%. I'm gonna go for the biggest one, that's 43%. And they wanted to go to the nature preserve. Oh my goodness, I can't spell preserve. Ah, I did it again, that is not an R, there we go. All right, so nature preserve is 43%. If you wanted to get fancy, you could color it in, but you do not need to color it in. I'm just, I like pretty pictures that are colorful. All right, so 43%, 28% is the next biggest number. So again, you could probably guess that this 28% is the History Museum. Uh, there are two 11%, so we're going to assume both of these are 11%, and then 7% is up here with other. Nothing fancy, not a whole lot of math I have to teach you there, just understanding some graphs. All right, well, when I started that, I realized that I couldn't quit coloring it. That would drive me insane, so we went with that instead. 
43% went with the nature preserve. So again, we had 30 total students. So we're going to go 30 times 0.43 because we want to multiply by the decimal. So 12.9 students, we're going to approximate that. So let's go ahead and round that up. We're going to go 13 students on that one. 28% picked the History Museum, so 30 times 0.28. So 8.4 students, so we'll round that down to 8. Uh, art Gallery, 11%, so 30 times 0.11. That is 3.3, .3, so we will round that to 3 for each. And then other, they're both 11%, that's how I knew that. And then 7%, so 30 times 0.2. 0, 0.07 gets me 2.1 or two students. Again, this is not perfect. It's approximately, if I could spell approximately right, uh, but that just allows us to figure out what's going on. Not too bad. Hopefully that makes sense to you. A dot plot. So the reason you, the good news about a pie chart is you can see pretty quickly where everyone voted in terms of percentages. So if you want to know a percent or how much of the whole thing is made up, that's why a pie chart is helpful. It's kind of hard to make, though, because you got to put a little data into it and figure it out. I like making a dot plot because it allows you to do this really quickly. All right. So you took a survey. How long does it take you to eat breakfast? You have your students or you have your friends write those numbers or send you a text message. All right. If you wanted to get a quick visualization of this, you can make a dot plot. Um, what I would do here is I would look at the numbers. I'm going from 0 to 13. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so we made a quick number line. We marked each thing. And then if you were to do this, it would be really easy to tally stuff up. So all we are going to do is put a dot or some symbol. I don't really care what symbol. If you want to put an X, put an X. But we're going to just kind of make a row here. So 0. 5, 8, 10, and we're just going to keep going down the list. There's nothing incredibly difficult about this, nothing really mathematical about it. It's just keeping tally marks by making columns. So you saw I already did it on the zero, but when you get one more than once, you just add another dot above your first dot. And in a perfect world, you'd be fairly organized so that tall towers look tall because you have them spread out evenly. See how like this three and that three are in the same spot. You don't want to like scrunch them together more than another one because then you won't visually make sense to you. There's another five. There's another three, a two, and a zero again. All right. That's a dot plot. Why is that helpful? Well, it allowed us really quickly to organize our data you could count stuff pretty quickly. What's the mode of this problem? Well, the mode is zero and five because they have four. It's really easy to see that. Whereas most of the data, most of the data is between two and six. There's basically like uh, multiple things. Some people don't eat breakfast at all. I don't know, how long does it take? Uh, minutes, I'm guessing? Uh, yeah, there we go, minutes. So most of you are in this kind of, they don't eat breakfast. Some of you are a quick eater from two to six. And then some of you, take a little bit longer and, and spend your time doing that. But you can kind of see a visual of what's going on with that problem. And it's a quick way of organizing data to get some, some basic reminders of this thing. So a doctor surveys 15 people on how many hours a week they exercise. So if we look at this table, we go from zero to nine. So I made a number line here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're just gonna mark our dots. So zero, three, six there's another six right underneath it so i'm just going to use that five there's another five underneath it there's another six nine notice how i'm crossing them off that way i don't i'm kind of jumping all over the place here so i'd like to keep everything fairly organized four 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 and i went too high but there's a five there so again by looking at that really quickly i can tell which one is the mode which one happens the most five where how much hours a week do most people exercise most in that five to six range you got one crazy person that does nine you got one person who doesn't do any but you can see really quickly where those trends are happening and you could do that from the data but it gives you a better visualization
So why are pie charts beneficial? It allows you to see percentages really quickly. Um, it takes more time to set up because we didn't even draw one there. We just wrote on top of stuff. Um, but you can see visually, hey, 25% here, 50% there, and so on. Why are dot plots beneficial? It's a quick, uh, just quick, dirty way of putting all the data in a, in a graph. It allows you to visualize modes really quickly, which one happens the most often. And for the most part, hey, most of the information is here. Little less scientific, a little bit faster. More scientific, takes a little bit more time. That's what you're dealing with. Hope it helps.